Welcome back to Nuts and Bolts Torqued. Before I get to what we're going to be doing for the bulk of this episode, let me take you through some things that I've done off camera and some things that have happened. So I guess the first thing to go over... Well, let me first show you what I did with my jetpack. So I made an advanced backpack, which is the same type of jetpack as I had before. In fact, if we look at the recipe for this. So the advanced backpack is literally a backpack, which itself is just a battery that you wear on your chest. It's just a battery that holds a EU, that's all it is. And if you want, using a jetpack attachment plate, you can strap your electric jetpack to the backpack. And what it does is it makes a, well, basically it just makes a jetpack that holds more power. It's not any faster or anything like that, it just holds way, way more power. You're combining a jetpack with a huge battery. So I made that, that one holds, if you see at the bottom of that tooltip there, it holds 600,000 EU compared to the electric jetpack, which on its own holds 30,000. So I haven't refilled this thing since I made it, and I'm only down to 559,000. So it lasts a very, very long time. Pretty sweet. And the recipe before, it's not too bad. Um, it's just some I typical IC2 stuff like the electronic circuit, copper item casing, and then a bunch of batteries, which themselves are mostly just bronze item, bronze item casings and copper cables and sulfur and lead. So nothing too complicated. Just a bunch of crafting steps. I guess the most complicated part probably would have been the jetpack attachment plate, which takes uh, takes advanced alloy. I made a bunch more of that. Takes carbon plates, which is just a bunch of coal. And iridium shards. I don't know if you can make iridium shards, but I think I found some shards in various dungeon chests. I think that's where I've gotten them so far. I think I've got a little stock of them. Uh, yeah, here. 17 left after making the plate. So I made that, and it's super nice. I don't have to refill my jetpack, like, ever, pretty much at this point. Okay, uh, let me set it to daytime. Looks like it's turning dark. So let me show you what's happened over here. I had a little bit of a problem. Well, before getting to the problem and the reason I took down all the control panel stuff for this whole farming contraption, uh, let me just mention that I did cheat in all the Pam's Harvestcraft stuff. As I said before, I, after updating Pam's Harvestcraft, I kind of broke it so I couldn't get any of the seeds from gardens, so I just decided to cheat them in. Unfortunate, but what are you going to do? Mistake was already made, and downgrading didn't seem like a good idea. So I did that. Um, I thought I had more than enough room here, but actually with all the Pam's Harvestcraft stuff, plus the few non-Pam's Harvestcraft stuff planted, I actually ran out of space. I ended up with maybe three, probably somewhere between three and five stuff that I couldn't plant. So I just got rid of some stuff that didn't seem too important and I didn't think I would use. I don't know, like a leak and stuff like that. But yeah, every one of these is a unique plant. So we got a whole hell of a lot of variety. As you can see, I added more drawers and filled them up. Although we have a bit of an overage problem, I need to fix the drawer system. Everything's just impact full, which is why I turned everything off. But anyway, that brings us to another problem. So I was having severe lag problems. I've been having some minor lag problems where every once in a while the server might kind of stop responding and just kind of hang for maybe a second. But I was having severe lag problems where it was hanging for more like 5 or 10 seconds. And I did some tick profiling, kind of looking at what was taking up the server's tick rate, that is the server's ability to process the events that are happening. I kind of profiled it and found out that apparently somewhere in all of the redstone connector stuff that I was doing over here was causing a severe problem intermittently. So I just tossed all of it. It's sad because I put so much work into it, but yep, I tossed it. The good thing though is that this is not going to go entirely to waste. All this stuff that I have here is going to stay. All these mechanical users are still good. It just means that instead of growing everything with bone meal, I mean, I could still do bone mill if I get my bone mill production up to the point where I can just leave everything on. I still could totally do that, but I think what I'm going to do long term is once I get more into Botania, I'll probably set up some of the Botania flowers that increase growth rate. And so I'll just leave those constantly going here and I'll switch all of these mechanical users from using bone mill to just right clicking on the crops to harvest them when they're full. 
And then we could just leave it running and put void excess upgrades in all the drawers and stuff, and just leave everything constantly running while using absolutely nothing up except just some mana. Which we should be self-sustaining because, all, you know, the mana is going to be used to grow the crops and the crops are going to be used to make food to feed the flowers that I'm going to use to generate mana because I'm going to use the flowers that eat food. But anyway, that's far in the future. So, some other things. I was looking at what I wanted to do for this episode. I had a lot of ideas in mind. There's a lot of things I want to do, but I just got to pick something and go with it. So here's what I'm going to do. I was thinking of how can we get... How can I mine automatically? I was looking at automated mining solutions. And you might notice a couple new machines here. Uh, the electrolytic separator, purification chamber, and combiner are new mechanism machines that I made. And the reason I made them is because I was looking at the digital miner from Mechanism as an automated mining tool. I've seen this used in some videos and it seems extremely powerful. And yeah, I didn't expect to actually be able to make it, but I was looking through all the things it needs and we actually can do it. We totally can do it. But it's a little bit pricey, but we can do it. Um, however, I was also thinking that it might be too slow on its own without any upgrades to work. So I started looking at some of the speed upgrades and stuff. You can see here, speed upgrade from mechanism. I was looking at what this would take and that I think we can do. Mana glass definitely enriched alloy, yes. But then I was looking at the osmium clump and I'm like, how do we make that? And that's where all this stuff came in. So combiner, turns out the combiner is not needed. Um, the combiner just skips a step. So, do I... Oh, I don't have it on me. One sec. Okay, so the way we make the osmium clumps is by putting... Oop, black spike. Is by putting osmium ore in the purification chamber along with oxygen. And then it just directly makes the clumps. You can see it work right here. Anyway, well, that's going. Um, I was looking at the recipes and I thought I actually had to use the combiner to make the osmium ore. Yeah, there we go. And you can use the combiner to make the osmium ore, but it's not needed. See, I was looking at it, and if you put eight osmium dust in the combiner along with cobblestone, it'll make one osmium ore. But what I didn't realize, because I never really paid attention to osmium, is that when you mine osmium, you just get the ore itself. So you don't even need to do this combiner step. It's completely pointless. So yeah, I could just skip that machine, and it's way more efficient to just put it in here directly. Uh, maybe I won't put all of it, just in case I need it for something else. So, that makes the clumps. Um, but one thing we do need is the oxygen to fuel it, and that's where the electrolytic separator comes in. So, I ran the service tunnel from over there, down here, and along here, so that I can get water to the electrolytic separator. It takes in water, and using power, it makes hydrogen and oxygen. Just separates it. Right now, I have it set to dump excess. So... When it makes too much hydrogen, it'll just dump it, because I'm not using that. But the oxygen is being used by this. Oh yes, and as it turns out, the mechanism machines have their own transport pipes for, well, everything. And I'm sure you could use other pipes from other mods for most things, however, mechanism gases don't work with fluid pipes, because, well, they're a gas, not a fluid. So like... Oxygen and hydrogen, those are gases. I tried using fluid pipes and stuff like that, and it just wouldn't work. So you have to use pressurized pipes from Mechanism. I'm not sure why it says this is from MC Multipart. But if you look at it here... That's mechanical. There. Basic pressurized tube. Super easy to make. Just some steel and glass. Okay, so yeah, that gives me the osmium clumps that will allow me to make at least the speed upgrades. I do also want to make energy efficiency upgrades. That takes gold clumps. I don't know if that's hard to make. No, I just need raw gold ore. Or gold shards, which is the injection chamber, but I don't have that, so <laughs> the easiest way is just uh, gold ore. So, let me look at what I need to make for the digital miner. And let's get to it. So one of the things to make... I've already made most of it, but one of the things to make that I want to show you, because it shows our new capabilities thanks to all our new equipment, is the Octatic 
Um, octatic capacitor, which requires a double layer capacitor plus a bunch of other stuff, which itself requires a basic capacitor. Now the basic capacitors aren't too bad to make, but the double layer capacitor requires energetic alloy, which previously we could not make. However, that's thanks to the arc furnace, that's no longer the case. So now we can make energetic alloy with one gold, one glowstone, and one redstone. And I think this can do a bunch at one time, so let me spread these out. And then I think the dust goes here. There it goes. Yep, doing, it, doing them all at the same time. Beautiful. Look at that. <laughs> 12 energetic alloy at one time. Oh, I love my new equipment. So cool. I want to watch it go again. 24! So much faster than the Osmeridium ingot. Yeah, this stuff, as it says, takes 200 ticks, and the Osmeridium... 6,400 ticks. <laughs> Christ. Alright, we've hit a little bit of a snag, but it's okay. We can get through it. So the issue is that... Well, let me back up to the miner again. So to make the final tier octatic capacitor, I need Empowered Emeratic Crystal. I, I'll talk about that later. I can do that. It's no problem. But I also need Vibrant Alloy. This cannot be made in the Arc Furnace. This basically, unless you find it in a chest, a blacksmith chest somewhere, if you want to make it normally, you make it in the Alloy Smelter. Just using Energetic Alloy plus Ender Pearl, which is super simple. But the Alloy Smelter itself is quite difficult to make. Now, all of this... I'm pretty sure I can make all of this pretty easily, except the enriched uranium nuclear fuel. That's a problem. To make that, it looks like the most straightforward way. I'm not sure if we can get this uranium 238, but we can definitely get uranium ingots. I already have a bunch of them, in fact. Because I've gotten tons of uranium mining. That's not a problem, but the tiny pile of uranium 235 is a problem. That either comes from the metal alloy or the thermal centrifuge. Um, unfortunately, I can't seem to make it in the metal alloy because I need yellorium dust and I have no idea where to get that. I've looked around some of the documentation. I can't find anything on where you find yellorium dust because evidently I found none so far. So it definitely doesn't seem to spawn in this world or the mining dimension. So I don't know where it appears, maybe on other planets, perhaps. But that's not happening. So what about the thermal centrifuge? Well, I was looking at this, and... Oh, the uranium-238. Oh, so actually when I do this, it's going to make the uranium-238 and the tiny pile of uranium. So I won't need the ingots. Well, anyway. So to make the tiny pile, I need a thermal centrifuge. And it just takes in something like crushed uranium ore... Not a problem. Again, I've got tons of uranium. And so to make the thermal centrifuge, I'm going to need all this stuff. This is all pretty simple. Lots of iron and copper and whatnot. I think the only kind of difficult thing would be the mining laser. That's going to take an energy crystal, advanced circuits, some advanced alloy, but I either have all this or have made it before and know how to make it. So, I'm going to get the thermal centrifuge made, and I'll be right back. Managed to make the thermal centrifuge. Let's test this thing out. So, it's power tier 2, and I want it to be power tier 3, so I've got a transformer upgrade to put into it. Also, one thing I don't think I mentioned is I replaced the industrial wires mod cables with just straight-up double-insulated gold cable from just vanilla Industrial Craft 2. And the reason for that is that the cables were not working right. They would just stop working for no reason. They would, like, appear sort of disconnected, and then when I destroyed them, it didn't even give me the wire back. Like, they were just really funky and not supplying power properly. So, it seems like industrial wires is pretty buggy, because between those wires from industrial wires and the control panel that I had to take down from industrial wires, it just seems like the mod doesn't work that well. It seems to have some problems. So, I just went this kind of ugly vanilla route. So, I'll just... I don't know, I don't really use the carpenter squeezer much, so I'll just pop it here. And before I connect it, I really need to make sure to put the transformer upgrade in. Okay. 
Please don't explode. Okay. Ah, no explosion. So let's throw some crushed uranium and it should get to work. Now it is going to take a while till it starts working. Um, from what it said, it needs to heat up to a certain temperature, as indicated by this very, very, very slow moving bar. And then once it reaches the target temperature, then it's going to start actually processing the stuff. Uh, we could probably speed that up by throwing some overclocker upgrades in there, I imagine. Right? I don't know if that's any faster. That might not actually make the heating up faster. It might just make the processing of the uranium ore once it is heated up faster. So I'm going to leave that to do its thing and I'll be right back. Alright, I think I got together everything to make the alloy smelter. So I ended up having to make a full set of hazmat stuff from IC2. Because it turns out there's a radiation effect, a very nasty one that you get when picking up uh, material that gives off radiation like uranium. Should have figured that. Would have appreciated a warning in the item or something, but yeah, nasty. So with the hazmat suit, we're all protected. So now I can hold these things and I um, forgot what else I made. Some iron furnaces, some manulin item frames. Nothing too hard. So let's make the alloy smelter. Oh, all right. First, we got to make the enriched uranium and nuclear fuel. Just need one. Boop. And uh, let me just stuff these in a box. Thankfully, they don't give off radiation in a radius, like, around anything you store them in. It's only if they're in your inventory. Um, is the enriched uranium nuclear fuel a radioactive? It almost certainly is, so I'm not going to take off my suit just yet. An energetic alloy block came from the compressor. Surprisingly, you can't just put them in a the energetic alloy ingots in a 3x3 pattern to make a block. You have to actually put it in a compressor or... Some other thing. Like, I think you can also melt it in a tanker smeltery. But anyway, yeah, there we go. Everything for an alloy smelter. Between the alloy smelter and the arc furnace and the blend... I don't remember what it's called. The rock hounding thing. Between those, we should be able to make pretty much any metal that we could possibly want. That's a big step. So let me get that thing set up and producing what we needed to produce. Okay, got us set up. There's the alloy smelter, connected up to power. And, um, kind of ironically, I'm going to be making... I'm going to be using this double layer capacitor to make the octatic capacitor, but the double layer capacitor itself can actually be used to speed up the alloy smelter, which will help me make the next tier. So throw that in, makes it hold more power, makes it go faster. So I believe it was energetic alloy plus enderpearls, right? Yeah, there we go. And that should make... I forgot what it's called. Vibrant Alloy. Yes! Okay, so that's going to take care of... Yeah, so now we got the double air capacitor, Vibrant Alloy. So now we just need the Empowered Emeratic Crystal. So the Emeratic Crystal itself is pretty easy. It's just emeralds put through a... Um, ah, I keep forgetting the name of stuff. The Atomic Reconstructor from Actually Editions. And in fact, I already had to make some of the emeratic crystals. However, the empowered emeratic crystals, of course, have to be put through the empower. We already have an empower set up in the whole oil, uh, canola oil production line. So rather than make a whole new one, I'm just going to go use that for a sec. All right, I think I've got everything ready to empower it. So chances are we're not using up so much power that this thing's going to, you know, it's going to pose any issues to just use this myself. Um, I should probably disable it, though. What, what part deals with the empower? That's channel 4. So let's just turn off channel 4. Get an empty hand here and yoink this stuff. I'm not sure if my hand actually needs to be empty. Okay, so to empower it, we need the emeritic crystal itself in the center, of course. And then on the sides, we need a strange mix of things. We need grass, which you get by using shears on grass, by the way. Oh. God, my machine's so cool, isn't it? So cool! That should shut off really soon and get to around 3.2, and then it goes back down again. Oh, I love it. Anyway, so <laughs> grass and oak sapling. 
and lime dye and a slime ball. So basically just a bunch of green stuff. <clears throat> Any day now. Holy hell. There we go. Whew. That took a while. There we go. So now there's the Empowered Emeratic Crystal Block. And I just put it in a block form just to make it more efficient. You can then break that back apart into the individual things that I'm going to need for the crafting recipe. And I think we have everything we need to make the Digital Miner now. Let me just turn this back on. Yeah, look at it get to work. So cool. Oh, is it not taking it? Because it, yeah, it doesn't need any yet. Just making sure I didn't break it or something. So, let's get over there and craft it. I'm excited. Again, it might be incredibly slow to begin with, but it's going to be so useful, I just know it. So, first thing, oh. Right, I'm going to need the capacitor that I put over here. Okay, so let's make that capacitor. The... Where is it? Isn't that a use for this? Why is it not showing up? Oh, there it is. There we go. Octatic capacitor. The empowered emeratic crystals and the vibrant alloy allowed us to make that. And I shoved everything that I was dealing with before. That, that, that. That, that. Um... I don't know. Hopefully that. <laughs> hopefully that's everything to make it. Digital miner. Ah, reinforced iridium plates. And look at that! We can make it. Ah, oh, that took a lot of work. It's so gonna be worth it. Okay, now I don't want to just set it up and be disappointed at how slow it is, so I'm going to see if I can make the speed and energy efficiency upgrades real quick. Alright, I think I've got everything together to make the upgrades. Let's take a look. So I want to try to make eight of each, eight speed and eight energy efficiency. Oh, perfect. Do I have enough for this? Oh, I don't have the mana glass? I don't. It's okay. Super simple, it's just this and this. Fintium dust, or whatever it's called, and glass. Yeah, there we go, eight of each. Eight speed, eight energy. All right, let's test out the digital miner. I think, just to be safe, because I've never used it before, I'm gonna use it in the mining dimension. I don't want to, I don't know, like accidentally mine every block in my base or something weird like that. So let's try it out here. Yep, it's big. And it does have an internal buffer, which is good. Okay, let's put the speed upgrades in it and any other upgrades. So I've seen some people put upgrades into mechanism machines and I think, yeah, it's, so it's not instant. It's like you just throw them in and then it keeps placing them inside. You can see the effect there, and... Oh! Oh! I didn't even know that the max amount you could put in was 8. But it is. Perfect. So you can see it's 10 times faster than it would have been without the speed upgrades. And does it tell you how much power it would consume if I turned it on? <laughs> yeah! Look at that! So, at that speed, it would need 300,000 RF per tick. Yeah. I'm glad that uh, I'm going to put some energy efficiency upgrades in. Let's see what these do. This is probably going to go up to 10 times, right? Let's see what, what happens with this. <laughs> okay, it's still really, really high, though. Oh, boy. 40,000, 30,000. I'm pretty sure I won't be able to supply this thing. Oh, God, is that it? That's it. 
Can I, um... Can I take some of these speed upgrades? Out? Yes? Good, because that's a little bit, like, way too fast. 3,000 RF per tick. Okay, that's more reasonable. Because I can make around 4,000. Or, I guess more accurately, I can transmit around 4,000. Oh, yeah. You know what? One little problem I didn't think of. I don't have any freaking power here. How am I gonna run this thing? Never mind, let's do it in the overworld. Yeah, I've gotta do it somewhere near the power source. Uh, let's do it... Let's try right here. And it keeps the upgrades in it, right? Yeah. Soak it up with some high voltage power. Hmm, it's not getting power. Is that not where it takes in power? Maybe it's back there. But then what's the top for? Oh, apparently. I uh, just looked at the wiki. I, I did the two exact wrong slots. The green slots are the energy, so it takes in power from either the sides or the bottom. Which we, of course, can't see. There we go. God, look at this hungry beast. It holds 12 million RF. Whew. All right, let's take a look at the config. Oh, that is a perfect time for a server backup, actually, just in case I ruin the world. So reset auto eject auto pull. Oh yeah, so you can turn on, I know you can turn on silk touch. It'll use more power if you do that. Let's look up how much power. So it's 18,000 RF per tick with it on, 3,000 with it off. So that's, what is that, five times? Mental math failing me. I think it's about five times more power to do Silk Touch. All is well. Um, why can't I config? Oh, I need to reset. Oh, right. Okay, so I think it, like, scans a certain area and goes through the process of scanning and taking in from a certain area, what you tell it to take in. And I guess you can pause it midway through that scanning process. So if you want to go back and config it, you have to reset it back to the beginning. So let's config. So I can set a radius to just whatever I want. No, no, it's gotta be, it's gotta be two digits. So, oh. Okay, you can put in two digits, but it's limited to 32. Min zero, sure. Max 60. I'm not sure what the min... Oh, that's got to be world height. So yeah, from Y0 to the absolute top of the sky. Well, there's no point in scanning the sky. There's nothing in the sky, so let's just go to like 70 or 60 even. Eh, 50. Nah, 60. <laughs> Inverse mode? No, that's fine. Okay, so right now it's going to scan a radius of 32 around it from bedrock up to Y60. And right now we're at Y... Yeah, we're at Y76. So 60 is going to be comfortably under the ground. So I can give it a filter on what I want it to collect. I just took a look at the wiki to get a little bit of a better idea about what this thing can do. The config specifically. So I think I know what I want to do. Instead of specifying exactly what I want, because I want a bunch of things, I'm going to make an exclusion. I'm going to exclude just some common blocks and just see what we get back using the invert. So item stack is if you just want a specific item as a filter. So let's filter out sand. We do fuzzy mode. That's if you're worried about, uh, you know, if an item can have, I don't know, I guess like NBT and stuff like that, but obviously sand cannot. Ah, yes, I think you can require it to replace it, so if it takes something away, you can tell it that, hey, I want to replace it with, let's say, dirt, and if you supply it with dirt, then it will replace it. 
but we don't want anything like that. So we have sand. Let's get in another one for some more common stuff. Gravel. Let's do two more. Stone. And I didn't do dirt yet, right? No. So I think if we filter out sand, gravel, stone, and dirt, that should get rid of the vast majority of garbage that we mostly don't want. I mean, it's not all garbage, but for the moment, I don't want it. So that's all in. Inverse means it should get everything but these. And that should be it. When I hit start, I think magic will happen. I'm excited. I'm scared. Here we go. Oh yeah. It's gonna mine 49,000 things. It's surprisingly not that fast. There's some uranium. Okay, so granite and andesite, I suppose I don't want those. Oh, hello there. Yeah, it's getting quite a bit of that stuff. So let's reset. Let's add that to the exclusion list. Oh, I should probably actually grab one of each. Okay. Ah, oh, you can see that eliminated like 20,000 items to get. Ah, diorite. <laughs> it's alright, we'll keep adding stuff until we get it. See what that does. That got rid of another like 10,000. Now we should only get the good stuff. God, look at that. Look at that. Vintium. Wait, what the hell? How did we just get dirt? Isn't that in the config? I'm like 90% sure that's in the config. Maybe it's a byproduct of something you mine. Maybe it collects byproducts? I don't know. That's an odd one. So what are we getting now? Ooh, we're starting to push our power to the limit. Slowly going down. So let's try this a different way. What the? Uh. Hello? Something's wrong. The power's like barely going up, and also I can't access the config. Okay, I don't know why it bugged out or why the power was going up so slow. It's started filling up normally, and now I can access it. So it looked like it was working really well, but let me try it for something else. Let's get it. Let's try to target kind of rare stuff, because it should be just as fast at getting kind of rare stuff as it is at getting common stuff. So, like, nickel is pretty rare, magnetite is pretty rare. So let's try it in. Instead of getting kind of everything, let's just get these specific things. I'm just going to delete these. I wish I could, like, save a filter list. But I could always add it back later. So this looks specifically for magnetite. And let's just see how quickly we get it. Inverse mode off. Start. Yeah, look at that. Look at... <laughs> 340 around here, and it's just going to give them to me. It's just, it's just grabbing them. This is amazingly powerful. I could just leave this, go do something else for like five minutes, and come back and I'll have 300 magnetite. This is incredible. I don't think I ever really need to go mining again. This is so cool! I love this. One of the reasons I wanted this, by the way, other than just obviously it's incredibly powerful in general, but... One of the reasons I wanted some sort of automated way of mining is I want to scale up 
our rock hounding stuff. I want, like, I want to rip out all these horrendous transfer pipe messes up here and especially down below. I want to rip out all that stuff, replace it with proper crafters, and some sort of probably XNet system. And I want to ramp this up to be able to process a lot faster. Because ultimately we're limited by the chemical extractor, which is not that fast. And I think we can keep the amount of lab ovens we have and scale up the amount of chemical extractors. We have quite a bit. I could probably have four to eight chemical extractors to one lab oven for each type of thing. I might need a couple extra mineral, mineral analyzers as well, maybe sizers. But yeah, I want to scale this up and rip it out and make it proper. Not that I, like, super, super need anything from here. But I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure I eventually will. But uh, to do that, one of the things that I keep running out of... Well, we need all these ingredients, right? So gunpowder we're getting from the mob system. Uh, we don't need much iron. That's And plus we get iron from this system. We need glass. Not that big of a deal to make that. We need salt. That one I would like to get automatically. But the biggest one is we need... We need coal. Like, it's not going through coal right now because it's run out of other stuff and I disconnected some stuff. I've just shut the system down. But it goes through coal, like, just so fast. To the point where I can throw in, like, a thousand coal and within, like, a couple hours it'll all be gone, at least. And if we scale this up to having many, many mineral analyzers, or chemical extractors, rather, then it's going to go through the coal even faster. So, I want to automate a system for getting coal and salt and all that stuff. And for a million other things, too. That's just one of the reasons I wanted something like the Digital Miner. So, while I've been talking, we now have over two stacks of magnetite. Beautiful, just gorgeous. We are slowly running out of power, but... It's fine, I guess. Maybe, maybe I'll take out one more. Now we should be going up, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, I think that's a pretty good place to end this episode. I am extremely happy with this thing. I hope you've enjoyed so far. And when I return, I'm once again not quite sure what I'm going to do because there's a million things I could do.